In the last two tutorials, I've been talking about ways to optimize a studio room for recording and mixing applications, controlling or eliminating problems like standing waves and flutter echoes. One of the simplest ways to improve the monitoring environment is to expend some effort in arranging the key components of the studio for the best placements in the room. Most all the decisions we make about our recordings and mixes are based on the sound we hear from the studio monitors. And yes, you can work in headphones too, but they don't always provide a suitable reference for what a mix will sound like on other systems. Best practice is to mix on speakers and check on headphones. It's critically important to hear exactly what's coming out of those studio monitors without undue coloration from the room around us, and maintaining the proper position for the listener relative to the speakers should be an obvious first step in achieving that. Traditionally, the mixer sits in a position facing the studio monitors exactly halfway between the left and right speakers. If he's a little off to one side, then decisions regarding panning and balancing the level of tracks on opposite side of a mix might be suspect. If the speakers are too close together, the mixer can't get a good sense of the width of the mix. If they're too far apart, there might seem to be holes in the stereo field. Ideally, the speakers and the listener should form an equilateral triangle. That is, the listener should be at the same distance from the monitors as they are from each other. Mapped out, this would form a triangle with all 60 degree angles. This ensures the best imaging and helps the mixer make decisions about stereo placement and balance that will travel well to other listening environments. Our hearing utilizes the high frequencies for our sense of depth and imaging in a mix, so it's important that the monitor's tweeters have a clear path to the listener's ears. The most popular approach nowadays is what's called ear level monitoring, where the monitors are positioned so the tweeters are at the same height as the mixer's ears when he's in the primary listening position. This primary listening position, the ideal spot for making decisions about the recording and mix, is called a sweet spot. You've heard me refer to it several times already. The best working environments allow the engineer to maintain this position consistently and not have to make judgments about sounds or effects while leaning over or with his back turned to the speakers, reaching for an outboard effect processor. This isn't always possible, but nowadays, with the relatively small footprint of most DAW-based rigs, it's easier than ever to have everything at arm's length with the fewest distractions during the critical stages of recording and mixing. One popular approach to ensuring that the sound from the monitor speakers is not overly colored by interference from the room is to locate the monitors very close to the listening position. If the speakers are no more than around three feet from the listener, then any reflected sounds will have to travel much greater distances than the direct sound from the monitors, and any resulting comb filtering effects will be weaker and less noticeable, providing a truer picture of the actual sound of the mix in the speakers, independent of the room. This approach is called near-field monitoring, and with the prevalence of small, high-quality monitors these days, it's in wide use by smaller studios and project rooms. Even larger studios often rely more on the console top near-fields for critical recording and mixing decisions than the big speakers on the wall. But keep in mind, near-field monitoring should not be thought of as a cure-all or a substitute for a well-tuned room. A bad environment will still make its presence known, and monitoring with near-fields does nothing to address standing wave issues from long or low-frequency wavelengths. You still want to treat the room for the best sound possible, no matter what the monitoring arrangement may be. Naturally, there are a lot more things you can do to help optimize a room for audio applications. These were just a few of the most basic issues and the most common solutions. But at this point, I'm going to move on to another topic that's very important to studios. Soundproofing.